This is Golf 5, Romeo Echo Victor, G5 REV calling secure, secure, secure. Standing by for any calls. Hi there, I'm Ben, I'm Golf 5, Romeo Echo Victor, and today in this video, I'm going to be exploring what this little button here does on the FT3D. Well, no surprises there, it is a Wires X button, but I live in a place where I have got no access to a Wires X repeater, so I can't actually get on the Yezu System Fusion stuff. I've got a DMR repeater close by, a Simplex repeater close by. Obviously, you'll know if you follow my channel regularly that I've got access to all star nodes and things like that. But what I don't have is a way of getting on the System Fusion or Wires X uh, system. So in this video, for as cheap as possible, I'm going to try and get on the Yezu System Fusion Wires X method of radio and see whether I can get a contact as a chaser for gateways on the air. So let's start with a bit of a kit list and how much everything will cost. So first things first, I bought a Raspberry Pi Zero from a Raspberry Pi retailer online. This cost me £13.50. It's very small. I was impressed with how small it was and how quickly it came. And then from AliExpress, I bought this. This is the Pi hat for the Zero. This clips onto the Zero and you can see there there's somewhere to connect the antenna that came with it. That was £23.20 including delivery and also with that for free I got the connectors and screws that I needed to build it all together um, including um, you'll see here there's some of these connectors that you're meant to solder on to the Raspberry Pi Zero but my Raspberry Pi Zero already had all these pins on. And I think they're just meant to solder there, but they were unnecessary for this build, so I ended up not using them. I think I could have saved 50p and bought the Pi without that on. And then I bought an SD card. This is a 32 gig. It's well overkill for it, but they're only £3.87. Uh, so that was all I needed. The Pi hat also came with this case. Like, it's a metal case that just clips together, um, and uh, it's, it's quite a fiddly thing, so I probably don't want to clip it all the way now, otherwise I might not get the thing open again, but uh, you get the idea. It clips together and it houses it all. So altogether, it cost me £40.57. So this is how I went about building it. Firstly, I got the SD card and uh, put it in an adapter that I had and into a computer ready to put the, the image software for Pistar onto it and I'll, I'll show you that in just a minute but that goes into the adapter and into the computer you put the image on there using some software like um, disk imager and then once the image is successfully on there uh, it needs inserting into the raspberry pi zero it can only go in one place and one way up uh, and that's where it goes uh, but interestingly the case has a place for the card to go in so you don't need to put it in at this point so you can start the build while that's um, updating with the image so this is where the pi zero goes and it's a little bit fiddly but there's two short screws and two long screws there was no instruction so i sort of made it up as i went along but it was clear that the pi zero needed to go right at the bottom of the case and then the hat obviously going on top so that the screen was flush with the top of the case and uh, i decided to just choose at random which two corners I screwed down and which two I then used the longer screw on. It's a little bit fiddly because it's quite a small thing and as you can see the size of my hands it was uh, it was uh, a little bit fiddly to do but still uh, easy enough. Uh, this screwdriver is magnetic that was helpful uh, just to hold the screws in place and uh, that goes there. And then there are some spacers and I've no idea what the little orange washers were for. I used them just because I felt like I should but if anyone has the instructions as to where they're actually meant to go that might be helpful but what I ended up doing was using these little white spacers in between um, but because I bought my Pi Zero with the pins already on you can see there they're, they're touching and preventing the thing going on so what I ended up doing was just um, cutting off these four pins I, I don't think they were necessary I think they were longer than they needed to be and thought well if I just snip them off it'll probably fit on all right um, if you buy the Pi Zero without all the GPIO pins and sockets attached you can just solder on the eight that you need um, rather than having the whole line there which is probably what I should have done but uh, as I say there were no instructions so I was just kind of making this up as I went along so I snipped those off it's quite fiddly actually because they're quite thick bits of uh, 
thick bits of metal really but um, just bear with me snip those off and then I was able to just push that pie hat onto the relevant pins there and I just wanted to make sure that they weren't actually touching because obviously if uh, those pins were touching the uh, screen pins then I'd have a problem but uh, as you can see there there was just about enough clearance so they weren't shorting and then what I did was use these spacers for the opposite two corners to the ones that already had something on and uh, again a little bit fiddly but I used the orange washer on the top of the board and then put the, the screw through the spacer and then uh, into the bottom of the board to uh, put it together um, that's what I ended up doing in the end and uh, it seemed to go together absolutely fine and uh, yeah, well built, well made bit of kit. Everything sort of lined up nicely and I had no problems in putting it together. So once that's through there and the other one in the opposite corner, then the box sort of just clips in place. Uh, it was uh, reasonably straightforward to clip together and the antenna goes on the top and, uh, and then you need to plug it in. Now I didn't buy a power supply because I had... A little wire that they, they just take a normal sort of uh, is it micro USB cable something like that and pretty much if you find a mobile phone from five years ago it's probably the cable that you used to charge it with so I just got a mobile phone charger make sure it's five volts that's all these things need and uh, it just takes it from either USB or a, a USB charger style thing uh, and so I didn't factor that into the price because most people have things like that just knocking around in in the man drawer or the wire drawer or wherever it is you keep these things so card slides in there and then the case there was two different metal bits that i just had to knock out you can see them here uh, they are going to cover once that's on there uh, the screen and the antenna socket uh, needed to be knocked out um, and uh, i just did that with a screwdriver and just sort of pushed them through uh, they just had two bits of metal so I, I think it, they, they work hardened and then just uh, snapped out and I didn't file them down I mean you could do but uh, it's only me that's using this so I thought there's no need to so that you can see a little bit of a spike there um, but uh, yeah then that clips on now that line that gap um, uh, you see the line on the left there that's actually so that you can see all of the different lights underneath oh yes i removed that little screen protector before i clipped it together um and uh yeah that that line just shows you there's different receive and transmit modes depending on which mode you set it up because these can actually be used for dmr and uh, other modes as well i think uh, i was using it for wires x system fusion but i think it can do dmr as well i've no need to use it for dmr though as i've got a local dmr repeater but you could configure it for that as well although i think it can only be configured in one mode at a time um, and that was in the uh, menus well that's it that just screws on there and then uh, plug in five volts into one of the two um, uh, ports on the side there i think it's the right hand port that it needs to go in and then it should just fire up and once it was built i think it's a solid build i was impressed with the size of it you could definitely take it out mobile or portable if you so desired and uh, i've got this little charger here which uh, just plug into the mains and uh, gave five volts dc into the into the node itself now what's clever about this is when you first um, plug it in and turn it on if you wait a few minutes it gives out its very own wireless id this is where you get the um, pi star download from if you just google pi star go down to downloads don't make the mistake i did there's one there can you see it called orange pi zero it is not orange pi zero it is pi v4 that you need uh, the orange Pi Zero is a totally different operating system. So it's the Pi version 4. If you're watching this at a later date, maybe it'll be version 5. But uh, Pi version 4 is what you need to put on as an image. And then it gives off this wireless ID of Pi Star Setup. Very clever. Although it did take about 8 minutes to turn up. So uh, just go slow. Be patient with it. These Pi Zeros are not particularly powerful. So it took a little time for it to boot. But once that came, you can then go to pi hyphen star forward slash and press enter and you go into the pi setup now in this video i'm not going to go into massive detail about how to set it up there's plenty of youtube videos out there that will give you the how to set it up i have to say i found this difficult it took me 
well over an hour because it was the first time I'd done it and a lot of it was trial and error, particularly which particular modem you needed to use so that the screen worked. Um, and every time you make a change in this and save it, because the Pi Zero is so slow, you have to wait a couple of minutes uh, for it to all catch up. So let's boot it up. If we plug it in, it gives a, a little flash on some of these lights here. And uh, I think it's fair to say that it takes longer to boot up than I would have thought it would take. I was expecting it to be just a few seconds like the All-Star nodes, but this does seem to take a little bit longer. And essentially what you do to connect it is once you've programmed the radio onto the right frequency and it's on this uh, um, ND mode for transmit and receive, you just press this wires X button here and it transmit something from the radio you can see it transmit and then the node should kick into life but because it takes a little while to actually boot up it doesn't always work first time but let's try it so it it transmitted something but it hasn't received anything yet so it must mean that this raspberry pi in here just because it's the pi zero rather than the pi three that i usually use in all star nodes must just take a, a little bit longer be a little bit slower to boot up but we'll wait we'll wait and see what happens Ah, there we go. It seems to have burst into life now. So uh, you can see inside the PCB lots of different um, abbreviations on the light. So you can actually see which mode you're transmitting and receiving in. But if you press this wires X button, there you go. It transmits, it receives, and then it gives you that um, mode to say. Now, for some reason, um, the search facilities and things on here don't work unless you first hold down the band button and it disconnects from everything and then once it's disconnected you can then go in the search facility here so if we go in here we can then search let's try and find the freestar network that should probably be sufficient to find it and it says waiting and then if we go in Freestar here, we can then connect to the Freestar network. And that is now connected, ready to go. So this is the unit. And the first thing you notice about it is just how compact it is. Really, really small unit. Um, I mean, I've got quite big hands, but as you can see, it's... Uh, it's a it's a tiny little thing. That's it by comparison to the, the radio. And it's also got a screen on it. So when something's being transmitted or received, as you can see there, you can see it uh, on the screen. So it's telling you who's transmitting and receiving. Now, this is the same information that ends up on the screen of your FT3D. So when one says one, you can just see how it's... Uh, just repeating whatever's on the screen. But still, it's a nice feature. It means you can glance over and see people's call signs as they're transmitting over here. There we go. Mike Zero, Juliet Kilo Tango, for example, has just come up. Um, so uh, so you can see it either, either on the screen on the radio or over here. So here I am on the sofa, and uh, I've just connected my Yezu FT3D to my little node and gone into the Freestar room. As we know at the moment, it's gateways on the air on Freestar, so I thought I'd try and chase someone. And wonderfully, there's a bit of a QSA going on now. So let's see whether I can get in and uh, uh, chase this activator uh, for where he's going. I think it's fair to say that the Yezu System Fusion has a bit more of a robotic twang than All Star, um, but it's still perfectly readable. Let's see if I can get in. Mike Zero, Mike November Golf Portable, Golf 5, Romeo Echo Victor. Romeo Echo Victor, the Rockin' Rev. <laughs> Good evening to you. I think you've done one or two gateways on the air activations yourself, haven't you? 
Yes, good evening, Ed. Mike Zero, Mike November Golf Portable. Uh, <clears throat> I thought I'd try my luck as a chaser, and uh, so I've been. Uh, I've built a little node for System Fusion. Uh, YSX, YSX, sorry, on Yezu System Fusion, and uh, I'm just testing it out actually. So I uh, thought I'd try and chase uh, an activator <clears throat> and try out my new node. So you're my first contact on that, uh, which is great, Ed. Uh, uh, name is Ben. Uh, based in Stamford, currently sat on my sofa trying out a new little toy. Mike Zero, Mike November Golf, Golf 5 Romeo Echo Victor. No distortion or break up at all. Um, if you told me you were in the next village talking to me over Simplex RF, I would have quite easily believed you. So uh, it's working very, very well then, and may you have many more contacts through it. Running one watt here from a, a Yasu ST1XD, so it's YFX. System fusion this end into the local gateway, which is Mike Bravo 6 India Golf Golf, uh, which is probably less than a mile away from here, line of sight. Yeah, Mike Zero, Mike November Golf Portable, Golf 5 Romeo Echo Victor. Well, fantastic to um, uh, work you for the first time, I believe, Ed. Um, so, yeah, great to work you then for the first time. Don't be a stranger um, if you hear me on any band, anytime, anywhere, please give me another call and we'll be um a, uh, a, a great pleasure to work here again god bless you back to you for any final comments golf 5 romeo echo victor mike zero mike november golf slash portable yeah, Mike Zero, Mike November Golf Portable. Uh, warmest seven threes to you, Ed. God bless you as well, and uh, very much hope to work you again, perhaps on a different band or in a different uh, different way. But uh, enjoy the rest of the activation, and warmest seven threes to you. G5 REV signing. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. I've really enjoyed building one of these tiny little nodes. They're so small and compact. You could definitely get a battery pack and work them uh, portable or mobile. Uh, such a lightweight, small thing. And I love the little screen on there. I think that's a really nice feature. If you've enjoyed this video and you're enjoying the channel, please think about subscribing. Just click that subscribe button at the end. And then you can also be notified about other new videos that I make in the future. But for now, I wish you the warmest seven threes. I'm Ben. I'm G5 REV signing seven threes. This is Golf 5, Romeo Echo Victor, G5 REV calling secure, 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 standing by for any calls. <laughs>